evening, everyone. Welcome to my home. I think it's great Friday evening. That's all this um, you guys here. You choose to spend the time with education. I think that's wonderful. I'm very proud of every one of you guys. And thank you for giving me a chance to share with you my experience and my research. Thank you. So uh, it's my sincere hope that the next 10 hours that we're going to spend together. I'm just joking. <laughs> The next two hours is going to be beneficial for you guys. And I try as much as possible to make it practical that you guys can practice those small tips and first right on Tuesdays. Please feel free to ask me any question. And without further ado, let's get started. I think this is where my journey started. And what I want to talk about today, some scientific basis for how I try to practice and here's in my small home, and how we can use evidence-based dentistry and dental implantology. Then I'm gonna try to talk about soft tissue healing. I'm gonna introduce the concept of soft tissue integration, and then I'm gonna try to share some of the clinical cases. How I used to practice and how I try to practice now. And I think this is a great time to be uh, in dentistry. What we can do is amazing now. It's really wonderful. I just, six years ago I used to do my myself for my patients in the lab, having my coffee, having my music, my lectures on, and I sometimes was wondering, I wish if my patient with me, so I can see how is that self will look on my patient. But today in the digital world, it's amazing. We can scan the patient's mouth, I can do the, my work stuff on the patient, even I can manage occlusion. I think that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Then I can take the same result in the patient's mouth and make the treatment more predictable. So I kind of struggle understanding what's going on with dental implant. Um, I took, I don't know how many courses. There's no course in North America that I didn't take try to understand um, how we can um, restore successfully. Is it the dental implant? What kind of implant that we choose and buy? Is the most expensive implant? Is the best implant? Is that how we're going to determine the best outcome for our patient? So we know soft tissues, um, healing, everything starts with soft tissue healing. So what we do with the body we make incision, right? Crystal incision, or we extract the tube. Now we want to place implant. Okay. Now, the body does not know what dental implant is, right? But what we know that the epitheliums, wanna, and the skin is the first line to first, we want to close the body as soon as possible, right? We want to stop hemorrhage, and we want to prevent any microorganism or foreign body to enter, uh, foreign um, material to enter the body. So every, everything starts with hemostasis and fibrin clot. After that, we know from research, especially on the animals, from Sikiyos et al. and Charhoudi, 1992, that the connective tissue seem to play important roles in how the epithelium stop down the growth. Okay? Because we don't want the skin to grow around the implant and reject the implant out, right? So we want to, for the implant to be successful and integrate. So we want that implant to stay in, and we want some type of interaction between the soft tissue and the implant or titanium oxide, or zirconium oxide, if you will. Now, Bertalier also published 1991, and he concluded the interaction between connective tissue and titanium oxide further stop epithelial downgrowth. So we want that relationship between the connective tissue and our titanium surface. We don't want the body to close and reject our implant outside. So this is what's important for me to understand what's happened, because the body doesn't care if you place implant or not. The body wanna heal, wanna close that socket. Okay. So what we do as a dentist, as a surgeon, as a restorative and dental team, we want to help the body do what's do best. 
heal well. Very simple. Everything is about the biological response of the tissue. It's not us. You know, we, I work very hard on some cases, and I'm not happy with the, how the end will look like. And sometimes I just I do normal work, and the result is amazing. So what's the difference? What I, what I did difference here? Many times it's just the body response. So let's step back and go to the basic wound healing. We know there's four phases of wound healing: hemostasis, <coughs> inflammatory, proliferation, and maturation. So the maturation is, is the end game, right? We want the tissue to mature and heal around it. And hemostasis is going to happen unless our patient has some medical disorders, right? So it's, the bleeding is going to stop. Okay? The inflammations. It's going to happen. What's important for us is to help the body heal and move from phase to the next phase. Very simply. So I think one of the important factors that I want to share here, especially for dental team, I think they are they could be great help in supporting your dentist um, and your patient. Okay? So if you want to move to healing and maturation, we want plaque control. <coughs> this is prerequisite. We cannot move from inflammatory phase to proliferation unless we have a plaque control. And I really think that the patient needs to hear it more than just from the dentist. It's need to hear it from you guys. You can help your dentist, your patient, heal better, but simple oral hygiene instruction. So I want to share one of my patients, Angie. She's wonderful, always great hygiene. Okay. We did a connective tissue tunnel technique. And I thought, like, wow, this is going to be an amazing result because that's very thick. This tissue here is very thick, very nice. Not every patient can give me from the pelvis this thickness. Okay. But you can see the plaque. So the patient's attitude is very important because they don't want to touch it. Because if they touch it, it's going to hurt. And the natural response, I just don't want to touch it. I don't want to mess it up for you, dentist. Right? So you can see the redness, and we still have inflammation. Are we going to be successful here? No, we won't. So just follow up with simple or hygiene instruction. It's very profound and powerful, especially from dental team, because you guys can be great support for your dentists. And you can be part of the success of the treatment, and you can stand tall and proud and say, you know, I, you know my patient's successful too because of the work of the team. So we know about the maturation six to eight weeks, and I'm gonna revisit this for soft tissue because sometimes my patient, and I'll show you one of the cases, take for complete maturation sometime a whole year. So we, we have to be careful. Remember, we don't do anything, which is allow healing, and we guide the body. So I think of us as a very humble. Um, we cannot do a lot. We just, if we are smart, we can help the body heal well. That's what we can do. And we can do that well, though. So the bones set the tone, and soft tissue is the issue. right? We, we know it's important. We cannot get a good crystal bone and save the bone without having a good tissue. We cannot have a good tissue without a good bone. Okay. So I'm going to leave a lot of these here is for you. When to use chlorhexidine? Is it something good to use on a patient? When in doubt and you have a problem with the plaque control of the patient, by all means, it's all about risk benefit analysis for the patient. What the dentist can decide with the patient and what you guys as the dental team can do to support your dentist and patient. <coughs> so let's talk about soft tissue. Because that's where's my passion, I think that's where's my research. So we know from CAN, published 2005, that's thick biotype, less buccal tissue recession. Okay. That's the main problem that we have. Patient come 
to my practice for second opinion with the hisses on the facials or the gray of the implant showing through. What's happened? We got to understand what's going on, right? So what I tell the patients when they come, please talk with your dentist. Go back to your dentist and speak with them and share your concern. You share a lot of concern with me. I ask them, did you tell your dentist this? Did you tell them your dentist that you are concerned about that gray area? No, I didn't. Well, dentists and dental team, we are not magicians. We cannot read mind, right? We need that trust from the patient. We need to allow that environment for the patient to talk. And if the patient is not talking with, the, with us dentists, we need, they might talk to you guys, dental team. And then this is, it's important. This is not time to gossip. This is time to, to go and speak with your dentist. And tell them it's my patient's concern. What we can do, doctors? What the reason? So, okay, great. Thick biotype. We all love thick biotype. So let's try to understand. We had a study here by Berglund, published 1961. This is a very important study. I think it changed how we think about dental implant. If you look at the left pictures, okay, on the left side of the implant, you can see that connective tissue is four millimeters thickness. Okay. If you see on second study surgery, same side on the right picture, we don't have any crystal ball loss. Okay. So the tissue is the issue here. We have more thickness of tissue, no ball loss. On the right side of the left picture, thin tissue, two millimeters. On the right hand side, crystal ball loss. I remember taking courses 10 years ago about dental implant. I've been told this is normal. The first years up to 145 millimeters of crystal ball loss, then 0 0.20 every year after. Okay. So if I'm placing the implant on a young gal, she is 18 years old. By the time she is 70, the implant will fall off. We're going to keep getting more, and that's normal. I struggle with that. But we know that's not the case anymore. We have a better understanding. So is the tissue thickness is important? You bet it is. So think about when we, when we are in the aesthetic zone, and we don't want our patient, young patient, with big smile lines. They smile all the time. They're very happy people. And then they smile. Do you want that gray? Is it the surgeon problem or the restorative dentist problem? Or you know what? Let's turn our back. It's the patient's problem. Right? That, so are we going to manage this after this has happened? Or we want to have the understanding?